and I'm going to start streaming it. All right, welcome to Chi Talk, everybody. My name is Ellie. Uh, I'm a medical Qigong practitioner and energy healing coach. And the purpose of these talks, the Chi Talks, is really about to spread the word of health and healing. And we focus on different topics every every week and you're welcome to join and ask question or share your inspiring story and interact it's kind of like we're sitting around a, a little fire and talking about health and healing uh, longevity happiness so um so this is a uh, chi talk and the topic today would be uh our bones bone health and strong bones and we know that a lot of people are getting uh getting older uh, the the bones are uh, are getting weaker there's less calcium it's something that is is uh is very prominent in the western like modern world that the bones getting weak as you get older uh, and this is a very strong topic a uh, very powerful in chinese medicine and qigong and energy healing the strength of the bones is uh very very important we talked about it a little last time so this is our topic today. Hi everybody. Hi Anne. Hi Janice. And let's uh, so let's start with a little meditation, a little uh, energy practice before we start, like we always do. This is a noon time in the Pacific Coast, so it's the energy of the heart is predominant at noon time when the sun is the up high in the sky. So let's uh, let's tap on the heart. Let's kind of put our fist and tap on the heart. And if you may, close your eyes. And if you're listening to this live and you're not driving, just go ahead and do it. Just make a fist, tap on the sternum, inhale deeply through the nose and exhale from the mouth. Make the sound of HA and a whisper as you exhale the air out. It's almost like you have a piece of glass in front of your face and you're trying to make a vapor on it using your breath. That's the sound. Inhale to the heart center. And on the exhale, release, find relief in that sound. Release of tension. Let's open the breath, the lung chi. So we have acupressure to open the lungs and they're right underneath the collarbone so if you the length of the collarbone from the sternum to the shoulders nest we have three major acupuncture points here one is associated with the kidney the other one is with the stomach and the other one is with the lungs the one with the kidney houses healing energy so this is very good for thyroid health it's called elegant mansion it's a very powerful uh, point to open the lung chi open the breath so tap on the one closer to the sternum take a deep breath and exhale one closer to the stomach grounding your energy yeah the stomach is the earth element and the one closest to the shoulder shoulders nest we call it is this little indentation between the chest and the shoulder muscle this is called letting go point it's an emotional release point so really here if you haven't already Make the sound, let go of mental thinking and start to feel the body, start to feel the tapping, feeling the breath, really immerse yourself in more of a physical bodily sensation. Let's switch side. Target these three acupressure points, one closer to the sternum, the one in the middle, and the one closest to the shoulder would be the emotional release point. I relax the tapping and close your eyes and feel the energy in this area that you knocked on. tingling, buzzing sensations. Feel the whole chest cavity. 
Take breaths into it. And every breath in just visualizes you as if you are putting more spaciousness in the lungs. And exhale from the mouth and release any stagnation, any kind of tension. Inhale to the heart center. Swirl the breath there a little bit before exhaling it from the mouth. Every breath in is spaciousness, ease. Make sure to exhale all the way out, all the way, the end of the exhalation. Make a note. This is the end of the exhalation. There's no more air inside. And then take another deep breath in. See when you're exhaling all the air out, so much more space for more energy. Let's put attention to our feet touching on the floor our sit bones on the chair. With each exhalation from the mouth, you're softening and relaxing the body further. As you learn to exhale fully through the mouth, slowly the inhalation becomes stronger and more more deeper yeah acknowledging not only the feet and the sit bones but but all the bones in the body all the bones in our body The bones are the deepest place in the body. How do we strengthen the bones? And next time when you breathe in, I just visualize as you can inhale also from the skin. Like every pore of the skin has a no little nostrils on it. And so the whole skin is porous. So if the whole skin is porous, can you inhale? We call it skin breathing. Inhale internally into the body. From the whole shape and form of the skin. Long inhalation, soft inhalation, exhale. Let's put the hands on the lower abdomen. Acknowledge the area between the navel and the spine. With our attention, let's open the eyes and open the hands. Beautiful, 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 powerful breathing practice, very relaxing. Yeah, this is the beginning of a very powerful Taoist practice to strengthen the bones. So there's many, many practices to strengthen bones. Last time I talked about me meeting a, a master. A, a monk. Actually, it wasn't a master. It was just a monk. It was a monk in, in the mountains of China. I was uh, being hosted by this monastery. <clears throat> and I happened to have a, a problem in my knee. <laughs> and, uh, and then the, the, this guy decided to help me out. And then we become kind of friends. And... Then we, he started to like, he saw that I'm a built guy and, I'm a, you know, so he said to like, hey, let's see, 
what is your strength? And we started to do the, the kind of like a, the paida, it's bone conditioning practice. And when I met his forearm with my forearm, it was just like meeting like a piece of steel, like a marble. It was really painful. Even though I didn't really bang it that hard, it was just a little bit, but try to bang your elbow, like your bone, your form against like a marble, like at the kitchen counter, it's, you cannot do it strong. So uh, I was very surprised. <laughs> All of a sudden, here it is, the guy, the real example of how these practices, this Taoist practices of strengthening the bones are actually come and here, here, here it is, he's a, 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 an example of them. So I started to ask him questions and he told me what he's doing and all that stuff. And of course, monks have a lot of time on their hand and they can sit and do practices for a long period of time. <laughs> we cannot afford that. But uh, then nonetheless, we, we still have some practices to do to strengthen the bones. So the bones, so last time we talked about joints and today we're talking about bones, but they really, both of them are, are connected very strongly. And the best way to strengthen the bone and the joint is to do practices that are connected to both because the joints are a part, uh, the entry point of the bone. Yeah, the end of the bones is where the joints are. And this is where the chi can penet penetrate into the bone and the bone marrow. So we, we, last time we talked a little bit about diet, kind of, I, I thought, I think Marty, you kind of mentioned a little bit about flaring of the joint whenever you're eating like a to tomato, which tomato is acidic, it's the color red, it's, it's, it's like big flag of inflammation. And we talked about like a little bit about uh, uh, food that is good for joint health, would be a lot of leafy greens actually, things that are more uh, cooling, uh, celery is very good, uh, refrain from uh, acid producing. So what happens? So the liver, so for any joint issues and arthritis and inflammation of the joint, just to kind of wrap up the conversation from last time, we want to, we want to understand that this, the organ that control the joints is the liver and the kidney. So the, any issue with joint would be a kidney, liver, spleen related in general. Uh, the, the kidney is always related because it's the root of all the organs <clears throat> and uh, the, the liver specifically. So the liver, what it does in Western medicine, we say it cleans the blood. Yeah, the, the liver removed toxins out of the blood and removed, and it has a lot of heavy duty work. The liver works really, really hard. Uh, in Chinese medicine, the toxins are not only uh, physical toxins, like if you heat, uh, you know, if you're exposed to a not clean environment, but also emotional toxins. So all emotional imbalances are being dealt by the liver. So a person that is very stressed out, that have a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress in his life, the liver will work harder. Uh, so, so, um, and when the liver is taxed, our emotional, so the liver controls the evenness of your emotions. Yeah, so whenever you're, whenever it's taxed, your emotions are swingy. Like a people that drink alcohol, right? Alcoholists, the liver is taxed because you're drinking alcohol. And what the next thing you notice on a person that drinks alcohol is mood swings, right? Mood swings comes because the liver is so busy <laughs> with cleaning the alcohol from the blood, from the blood that um, the emotions are not in check. So it's very interesting. <clears throat> so in Chinese medicine, we actually see the organs not just as a doing a physical, uh, a physical job, but also an energetic and mental job. So we see the body as a, in a holistic way. So the emotion, your mental, your lifestyle is all is all affecting your internal environment, the organs. Yeah, so stress would be very important for joint health. Because if this, if the if the liver has to work so hard to, you know, if we are stressed, and what's stress? Stress is just a perception of what's going on in our environment in our environment. Some people are triggered more than others. Some people are triggered subconsciously. So this is why um, Qigong preventive medicine. Uh, self-care practice so good to do it on a regular basis to keep to be um, 
to be less stressed out, yeah. Also kidneys being taxed in stress. Uh, so th this, is, this is important to understand. I just kind of wanted to, to uh, talk a little bit about the organ health, what you eat, your lifestyle, your stress, and how it's related to, to an issue, like a, a, a bone loss. So what, what would be a bone loss? So what's the difference between a joint issue and a bone? So the bones are actually connected to more like less than liver, but more to the kidney. And actually the kidney, and now they found in Western uh, medicine, they found that it's true because they didn't, they didn't know it before. In Chinese medicine, we always say the bones control the bone marrow. The, sorry, the kidney control the, the bone marrow. And now finally they found, they found a, a hormone in the kidney that stimulates the bone marrow. So the kidney now has a connection in science too, to the bone marrow. The bone marrow is really the root of your energy. So the, the, the root of all the organs in the kidney, a little bit about Chinese medicine. And then, uh, and then your bone marrow, the health of your bones, the strength of your bones and the production of blood it's all connected to kidney and the bone marrow as the health of the kidney. So then food to help with bone strength would be something to nourish the kidney. <laughs> and, that would be, and that would be bone broth. I know some people are vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, bone broth. Uh, or if you're vegetarian, then a lot of dark dark uh, fruits and vegetables like purple, purple carrots, pur blueberries, things that are darker in color would be nourishing the kidney. Uh, bone marrow would be really good for, for the strength of the bones. So this is in terms of that. And of course, again, stress. <laughs> stress and the way to nourish kidney chi is by mental rest, mental rest. Overthinking depletes kidney energy. Meditation, good night's sleep, and um, uh, qigong, soft qigong, or a soft yoga practice would be really good. So all of these are going to be something that you can, yeah, mental rest would be nourishing your kidney energy. Yeah, when, whenever you, and let's connect also the kidney connect to sexual organs. So like you can, you can think about if you didn't sleep the whole night, you're really groggy. It's just, you, you, you don't have sexual energy. You don't have uh, uh, strength, right? So this is the kidney chi. This is very important. And that's nourishing the, the bone. So people that party too hard or overindulge in sex also connect with the loss of bone. So stress, stress, any type of lifestyle inflammation, like, party hard, <laughs> no sleep, <laughs> that would deplete. The... Now that's, that's on that side and a little bit, a little bit on diet. And then, and then, um, and then other than that, there's practices. I mean, this monk that I met with, <laughs> with the, with the iron, uh, iron uh, forearm uh, did not do it because he just was not stressed. Uh, there's actually practices and he's also a vegetarian so he doesn't eat bone broth so so what so there are practices to strengthen the bones you know now in western medicine you know we know that that anything that has to do with uh, like with activating the muscles would uh, strengthen the bones yeah lifting weights or doing any uh, walking a lot would strengthen the bone jumping would strengthen the bone we know that rope jumping, jumping, what's jumping? You just hit the bone. You just hit your bone, boom, boom, boom. You hit the bone. It's almost like the practice of a paida that they're doing in a, a Chinese monk. They hit the bones. When the bone get hit, they get stronger. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's a that's a practice of, uh, of a, it's a certain way to do it, and there's also also in Chinese medicine, in qigong, we know why the muscle when you contract the muscle, the bone strengthen. 
So that's very interesting. And there's a whole explanation about this. So uh, it, it's a long workshop that we're going to do on May 30th on Sunday. So if you're interested to actually practice the whole sequence of joint and bone health, that would be um, May 30th from 10 a.m. To, to 1 p.m. Pacific time. And we would go over this practice, over this ancient practice of, uh, of bone strengthening. So I, I wanted to invite you for, for this and, uh, and also kind of open to talk about it because um, you know one of the books that was written by uh, Master Grandmaster Mantak Chia, very famous master, Qigong master, about an 80 year old woman from uh, LA that had um, a lot of bone loss and through the practice, through, the, through this practice of bone, uh, bone marrow washing and bone breathing, she actually strengthened her bones very significant, like in a significant amount. She took, she took, uh, she went and actually showed it, and and it's documented in the book. And she did it over a period of I think three years, like significant improvement from. And that's a a, a woman that was uh, eighty year old. Uh, so this uh, that's in his book too. And so, yeah, so, but in general, walking is very good. Jumping is even better. <laughs> Jumping rope would really help bone strength. Tensing the arms would do it. And in Qigong, we do it a little bit more consciously. All these practices are being done a little bit more in a methodical way. So there's actually a, a, a sequence of how we do it. There's a way to breathe that when you tense the muscle, that the muscle. So all of these things are uh, we're gonna, gonna cover in the workshop if you're interested to practice these practices. Uh, but in general, I would say uh, mental rest, low stress life and practice Qigong, especially the sequences that we're doing today in uh, Qi in, in uh, our weekly classes are all about the joints. And when you when you target the joint, you target the bones because it's a, a, the edges of the yeah the bone the joint are in the edges of the bone, so that's the entry point. It's very important. So whenever you're working on joint, you're working on bones as well. So uh, with that said, I think I talked a lot. <laughs> I just wanted to open it for questions, more specific questions, uh, personal questions, or anything that you wanna add or something something that you want to add to this anything that you think about it uh, just so i know that i answered or i kind of covered a little bit <laughs> anybody i see joyce is here Anne is here janice peter good to see you buddy <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. So I thought I heard you say bone breathing, correct? Yes. So I've learned that practice in the past. Um, I don't practice it probably because I was skeptical about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Can you just comment more on bone breathe the bone a bone breathing practice? I'm yeah. skept I'm skeptical because. You know, we breathe, we breathe with our lungs and our diaphragm and other things. The, the whole concept of bone breathing mm -hmm. was really out there for me. So if you could just comment on it. <laughs> I can see it, of course. You know, what you have to understand is that the, the, the chi always follow your mind. So the, 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 the the mind followed the chi so you, so wherever you put your energy the 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 energy wherever you put your mind in your attention and your intention the energy goes there and it's very simple to to say it and to understand it on the intellectual level but i tell you i've seen some people with uh, kind of like 
these uh, superhuman abilities in China. And it's amazing how it works on these very, you know, people that do all kinds of things with their energy that really, when you put your attention and intention, the energy goes there. It's so powerful. And, um, and the bone breathing, you put your attention on your bones, right? You, you put your attention on the bones and the chi will go there. The energy would go into. So this story about in the Mantak Chia book, I mean, you can read it. Uh, the 80 year old woman, she did bone breathing for three years. That was her main practice. She did other things too, but she, that was her. Main. But um, I have to say with, with practices like that, you have to do it very uh, consistently to have results. You have to really, really do it. It's, it's, like, it's like going to the gym. It's like anything, you know, you cannot lift weight. You cannot just go to the gym like once a week or you cannot brush the teeth like once a week and expect not to see the dentist. You, you know, it's, so it's like that. It's really like that. You have to like do it every day to see improvement over time. And, um, and so that's, that's uh, but it, it is when, when you're skeptic, um, that's the biggest uh, hurdle. <laughs> that's the biggest hurdle really, but the biggest hurdle when we don't believe in something, we don't have the motivation to do it. And we, so how do we, how do we, um, how do we engage in it? The one thing, how do we go about it? For me, the most powerful thing is to actually uh, see examples that people that did that and succeeded, <laughs> right? To see, you know, to see my master, you know, shooting energy to, to something and the, the something moves, you know, like, like telekinesis stuff. And he cannot do it because he's not, concentrating so whenever he concentrate all of a sudden the telekinesis work or really i mean this is like a but it's with everything it's with everything when you put and science know that when you put your your attention on the left hand for um, over a minute there's more blood and oxygen flows into the that hand so there's more blood and oxygen flow into that hand so if you think about okay two hand i'm going to think about this hand more blood and oxygen will flow into this hand. So what is oxygen and blood? It's healing energy. And if you put attention, and you know, we know that uh, uh, from the messages from water, right? For Dr. Emoto, you can look it up on YouTube, Dr. Emoto, very famous doctor that showed like how our intention, like when we take, <laughs> when we take rice and every morning people were saying to one cup of rice, you're beautiful and to the other cup of rice, you're ugly. And then the rice that they say ugly got mold. Do you know this one? Over a few days and the other, and they did it all over the world, Sweden, Japan. So intention and attention. So if you look at this body, you know, and you, you send it love and attention, it, it heals and the energy there, the oxygen. So really it's, this, this, this is really the premise of, uh, of uh, bone breathing. It is. And whenever you are in a deep state of mind, like these theta brain waves, you know, this kind of sleep, not sleep place, that's where you, that's where it shows. Also in science, we show that, that actually things work faster so whenever you're in the flow state in your mind uh the energy the energy uh, uh works even even better i don't know if that's uh something that you can uh, <laughs> uh and i think it's also by what we talked about two um two talks ago about certainty so you create with your mind your world and if you if you say, I'm 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 now strengthening my bones, that's my decision. And I'll, this is the practice that I'm doing it with, and you do it all heartedly, consistently, it's gonna happen. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the bodybuilder, uh, used to say that it's not it's not only all the workout and the diet and all what he did. 
he also imagined in his mind how he wanted to look like. And that was very, very powerful without, he's, he is actually a very uh, strong believer in this. So if he's not visualizing, you know, his bodybuilder shape, whatever he was imagining, he couldn't get there. And that's kind of part of manifesting. But this is, this is really like the determination, the certainty that, uh, that we have, the commitment, the, you know, the, this is your project and you're, and you're going to do it. It's just a matter of, of time until it shows. And, and this is, uh, this is how every every time people broke record olympic games and things like that <laughs> they broke record right and whenever a broke a, 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 a record broken in the olympic games all of a sudden everybody could break it too it's very interesting it's something in the consciousness in our mind the mind doesn't want you to change it doesn't want you to change it will do whatever you can to tell you all kind of doubt, doubt in this, in the teacher, doubt in the system, doubt in the technology, doubt in yourself. It will put everything it can to take you out of changing something. And, and this is, uh, and this is really, this is, thank you for raising that up because there's a deeper conversation about healing, really about how to change and the visualization, the commitment, the certainty, and the practice is, uh, is a tool. The practice is a tool and you are the hero and you're not gonna finish until you, you complete your task. You're not gonna finish until you complete your task. So that, that's, that's uh, and, and I've seen it on everybody that I worked with that was adamant about getting this out of the way, you know, whether it was in so like crazy insomnia for years with medication or, or pain, like very myriad of things that I've, but, but these people were individuals that I, I kind of saw it from the beginning. They're adamant. They're going to do it. They're writing their story. Now they're the heroes and they're doing it. They decided to do it. Does that make sense? And I think the practice is just a tool, but the mind is bigger than the practice. You know, the practice is the tool, but the mind is really what makes, makes the difference. We're creating an illusion with our mind and this is our reality, we call it reality, but, but there's a difference between illusion and delusion. Isn't it the subconscious mind that you want to make stronger than the conscious mind? The subconscious yeah, mind, much, you that's believe? Right. That's right. Exactly. One, so much more, more powerful because the conscious mind, only 4%, we say. Mm -hmm. so, but we can penetrate. The penetration is through, uh, is through practice, through consistency. It's through consistency. Is this going back to a few talks ago about this woman in the in the uber that i took and she told me how can i, I always fall fall out of my going to the gym and you know she she's she's a really overweight and she wanted to lose weight and i told her look whenever the mind tell you oh i'm not gonna go today because i'm too tired i'm i have too much to do today i told her that's the time that is the time to go if you override the mind in the, in the moment that it tells you to step out of it, in the moment of doubt, in the moment that you tell yourself, no, you know, no, it's not going to work. I don't believe in it. You know, all these things. When you have set in your mind a goal, when you override it, that's the point where you make progress. And then you override it again and again and again. And after a few times, you're, you're on a different path already. And this is how, this is how I, I found out that it works. It's just, right? I mean, I think we all did. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm just talking. <laughs> I'm just 
here to talk about it, but we all understand it, I feel. Yeah, okay, wow. Thank you, Peter, so much for this. This was really driving the conversation deeper. I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, anything else? I, I, yes, Edward. So this to me is the most powerful conversation. And uh, I also want to make you aware that uh, May 31st um, or May 30th, Sunday, is Memorial Weekend. And maybe having the seminar, because I want to do it, could be a problem for some people. Mm. They may want to, you may want to look at that. Ooh. And the other thing is, to everything you. you're saying, Peter, everything, thank you. Because I told you this before, uh, four years ago, I couldn't walk. Doctor looks at me and says, you have the gout. And I just said, I don't have that. And four hours later, I was hiking three miles. And that was the end of that four years ago. I had um, hepatitis from bad fish. And the uh, doctor said, you're not getting out of the hospital. And my wife was pregnant with my first son. You're not getting out of the hospital to your Billy Rubin goes down. And I concentrated, I visualized the liver, I squeezed out all the bile. And the next day he said, something's wrong. You can't be normal in a day. <laughs> I said, I'm out of the hospital. And it's just that conviction. And this is a visualization. And to breathe through your bone is just visualize it. Yeah. I pictured the air coming out of the bone, you know, <laughs> going down to my feet, going into my head. I can feel all of that in the visualization. Yeah, and beautiful. Yes, beautiful, Edward, beautiful. Because the story that we tell ourselves, the stories that we create, creating a reality, not more than this, where you think that this is reality, not more, right? Yeah. It, it's the, we creating reality with our mind. And this is what visualization is about. And by the way, I was able to help uh, one of my clients get out of a, a, a extreme eczema situation in her body. She, she she didn't feel comfortable even to be seen on the street because it was so it was so uh, intense. And this practice with the liver that Edward just mentioned, we did something similar. But it was it was many many different things, but really a consistent visualization uh, healed after she tried like many 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 remedies. And um, yeah, so the visualization is. Uh, is very powerful. We 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 don't grasp it because we think that this is all so real, and what we visualize and imagine is is nothing. But yeah, thank you, Edward. That's a big one. What, 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 one more thing. I am so determined not to put any prescription drug in my body, and that I have no time for pain or suffering from bones or kidney or this or that or liver. I am, so, that's my underlying of everything. You're not giving me another prescription. I'm not taking that. And I don't have that. And that is so powerful to me. And I, maybe people can grasp onto that is that I'm not going to be sold another drug. I'm not putting a negative something in my body for all the side effects it's going to give me. And it's mind over matter. And my mind is, you know, we all have the God-given ability to choose. And I choose no drugs. I choose no alcohol. I choose I have no time for that stuff. And, and I just wanted to say, just as a, as a side note, because a lot of people listening, it's not a call to everybody throw out their prescription drugs. <laughs> not, not at all. Please don't do that um, if you are on some medication. The, these practices that you take on can can supplement. And, you know, if you are in an aim, I've gone through people stopping taking this uh, medication drugs, but it was over time when we see, saw progress with these practices, with this uh, medical Qigong practices. So when we saw the progress, people could, could get off the medication slowly. Um, and it happened. It happened with people that are determined. Uh, and believe in their in their in their force and you know there's all kinds of practices uh 
but it's yeah it's it's all related to the mind and the energy and of course we're 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 there's a bigger story behind our being here um but let's not get into that now <laughs> all right um let's close because we're a little bit over time but thank you so much everybody for joining thank you uh peter so much thank you dan Edward, thank you so much. Janice, thank you for joining. Uh, let's do a, a closing ceremony before you, before everybody leaves. Thank you, Joyce, for being here and Anne. So let's uh, kind of close our eyes and drop into our body. The present moment. How do we drop into the present moment? Is that just we feel the body and let's feel the feet touching on the floor. Feel sit bones on the chair and just the whole form and the of the shape in the body as we sit here now as you look at the body as you feel the body You're amplifying your chi force just by not thinking, moving from thinking to feeling. We are strengthening our chi. And as you think about the whole form and shape of the body, let's. Uh, Kind of wrap this practice up with the skin breathing. The skin has many pores, and each one of these pores is breathing. Imagine that. Let the inhalation be long and soft. And the exhalation would be from the nose as well. Draw the energy from outside, inside, through the screen of the, of the skin. And as you breathe in, what would you like to breathe in? What type of energy? Is it strength? Then say the word strength. If it's love or joy, then say that word on the inhale. Visualize it, permeate the body from outside, inside, And every word has a vibration. When we say strength, strength feels a certain way. Just remember a time that you felt very strong. How did it feel or vital? Or happy? Infuse your body with this chi. As you're breathing from a beautiful source of energy far, far away, it goes all the way in from the sky above through the pores of your skin. It's beautiful. Let's open slowly the eyes. Thank you so much for this. And uh, the way to 
<laughs> acknowledge that really a change happening is just to notice how we feel after just like two minutes of an intentional breathing practice, right? Uh, and what would happen if we do it every day? And what would happen if we do it for an hour? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you tomorrow in class. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow in class, uh, 8 p.m. Uh, good night, Qigong. Really powerful class if you haven't been. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Good to Bye. see you guys. Bye. Bye. Take Bye. care. Thank you.